Coming up on Mountain News, how one organization is helping children in Eastern Kentucky during these difficult times. And a huge yard sale is still expected to happen, but how will that look this year? We'll continue to see scattered showers and thunderstorms this evening and even as we head into your Thursday. I'll have your forecast right now at 530. Dedicated to Southern and Eastern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 530. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. President Trump is expected to hold another COVID-19 briefing at any time. We will put that on our second channel, H&I, and the WIMT Facebook page if you are interested in that. Meanwhile, Save the Children is an organization aimed at improving the lives of children through health care, availability to educational opportunities, and economic support. During difficult times like these, giveaways across the region are providing all of those things, plus some much needed hope. WYMT's Lacey Roberts has more. It has been more than one year. Hi, how are you all? You know, we've not done anything like this. Since Knott County Schools, Save the Children held a giveaway of this magnitude. Items that we have collected uh, over about the course of the last year, and we just thought it'd be good to try to get some of this stuff out to the community, you know, and especially in times like this. That is Justin Ambergy, Community Engagement Coordinator for Save the Children and Safe School Coordinator for Knott County Schools. Along with planning this, we've been planning the reopening of the schools as well, so been a pretty busy summer so far. Wondering about those volunteers helping the organization during this busy time? Hi, how are you all? High school boy? Okay. Of course, it's a one lane bridge, so it's kind of getting a little hectic. That would be the traffic and school resource officers. Five, seven, eight boys. Just some school pencils and some yogurt. All while wearing masks in more than 80 degree heat. We didn't want anybody to have to get out of their cars and wanted to do kind of like a, just a drive through so people uh, could come in, feel safe. Focused on children in the Knott County school system, giving away pencils for back to school, toothbrushes to promote health, even activity bags. Frisbees and jump ropes, just things that they can do. Uh, sidewalk chalk. A lot of different things that kids can use this summer just to get, get them out of the house, get them active outside. We're just trying to get it out to the community and hopefully it gets put to a good use. All in an effort to bring joy to a community in need. And Heinemann, Lacey Roberts. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> WYMT Mountain News. Along with the giveaway, some selected bags contained an index card indicating they won a prize. Those prizes ranged from a crock pot to a 50 inch television. As schools across the Commonwealth gear up to reopen, this school year is coming with some additional costs. Lieutenant Governor Jacqueline Coleman says the need for more funding for public schools existed before the pandemic, but now lives depend on it. I'm a teacher um, and was an assistant principal before I ran for office, and we are very accustomed to hearing, uh, here's all of these things that we want you to do, but we don't have any money to give you to do it, and we need you to figure it out. So that's pretty common. Uh, this is different because this is literally life and death. Coleman has formally requested additional funding for Kentucky schools in a letter to United States Secretary of Education Betsy DeVos. First, it was toilet paper and hand sanitizer. But since the coronavirus has continued, there have been shortages for many other products, including some unexpected ones. CBS's Vladimir Dutier takes a look. Welcome to Maryland. Armel Posey is driving back to Maryland from Pennsylvania. Two-hour journey with his brother, Yacent, in search of lumber. That's right, lumber. It's kind of frustrating having to drive uh, around, not being able to find what you need. Frustrating because of this, a fencing that's still unfinished. I'm at Home Depot. Uh, you can see most of the shelves are empty. And lumber nowhere to be found. All over the country, the need for lumber is on the rise as restaurants are turning sidewalks and parking spots into outdoor dining havens. The wood is not the only item flying off the shelves. I'm trying to get a new bike and they told me I'd have to pre-order. It would be at least September. From pools of all sizes. I have a two year old at home just trying to survive. To coins and even puppies. There has been a nationwide shortage of some very unexpected items. Sunil Chopra is a professor at Northwestern University. What COVID-19 has done is provide a shock to the system that these manufacturers did not anticipate. 
Absolutely. It's provided a demand shock to the systems. People who otherwise would not have bought those puzzles are buying puzzles now. So you have a sudden surge in demand, which most suppliers are just not prepared for. A recent survey found that 97% of organizations reported a disruption due to the pandemic. Fewer supplies combined with a boom in demand. In the short term, this does cause significant disruption. A disruption that Armel and his brother now have to deal with as they continue their cross-state pursuit for that perfect backyard. I spoke to some restaurant owners over the weekend where they have built those extensions with lumber. It took them weeks to procure from multiple suppliers. With more and more restaurants opting for outdoor dining just to survive this pandemic, the demand for those wooden planks and fencing will keep going higher and higher. Vladimir Jutit, CBS News, New York. Amazon alone saw a 26% increase in the last month on online shipping orders. Those with severe PTSD or a chronic illness that makes it very hard to breathe can be exempted from wearing a mask. According to the CDC, studies have shown masks help prevent the spread of the coronavirus. Medical professionals say it is rare for someone to be exempt from wearing a mask for medical reasons. There are different styles and materials and almost anyone can find one that works for them, even patients with chronic lung disease and asthma. Well, we're tracking just a few scattered showers and thunderstorms moving into some of our area, but most of us still remaining on that dry side this evening. We're going to take you up to Pinpoint Doppler where you're seeing kind of some heavier showers and thunderstorms, some stronger ones starting to move into actually the Charleston area over into parts of West Virginia. We even have a severe thunderstorm warning for just a sliver part of Wayne County. Uh, of course, that's in West Virginia. That goes until about 545. Some heavier showers now moving into parts of Lawrence County into the city of of Louisa, maybe just a few stray showers in Morgan County, going to be moving into parts of Johnson County here in the next little bit, but those aren't on the severe side right now. It's feeling like, though, temperatures are into about those mid to upper 90s, feeling like 96 in Jackson, 95 in Hazard, 94 in Williamsburg, a nice 96 down into Middlesbrough, and that's because of these dew points. They're into about the upper 60s to lower 70s, so it making it feel a lot warmer out there than it actually is. We are definitely in that instant sweat category as you step out the door. Now for tonight, we'll hang on to a few scattered showers and thunderstorms and temperatures will drop near about 70 degrees. More showers and storms move in for tomorrow as well. I'll have more on that coming up in a little bit. Paige, thank you. China is vowing retaliation against the United States after an order to close its consulate in Houston. Fire crews gathered outside the consulate after reports that documents were being burned within the compound. It happened after the U.S. gave the consulate 72 hours to evacuate. The Chinese government is calling America's recent actions unreasonable and are vowing to retaliate. Officials in Florida say they have solved a triple murder case just a couple days after announcing a $30,000 reward for information. The suspects were identified as 26-year-old Tony T.J. Wiggins, his girlfriend, 27-year-old Mary Whittemore, and his brother, 21-year-old Robert Wiggins. Investigators said the victims were beaten and shot when they met up to go fishing around 10 p.m. Officers said one of the victims called his father asking for help. His father rushed to find his son barely alive and his two friends dead. According to the families, the suspects and the victims were best friends and knew each other for years. President Trump announced plans to send additional federal officers into U.S. cities with a mission to quell violence. The White House is expanding a program called Operation Legend. Several mayors are pushing back, saying those forces are not cooperating with local officials. The program plans to send federal law enforcement to Chicago, Albuquerque, and Kansas City, Missouri. We will use federal law enforcement to vigorously charge federal crimes and support these besieged communities to the greatest extent possible. This will be hard, painstaking work. Operation Legend was named for a legend Talaferro, a four-year-old Kansas City boy who was shot and killed while sleeping in bed last month. Legend's family, along with the loved ones of other gun violence victims, attended the president's announcement. As baseball season kicks off, the Boston Red Sox are making a big statement. A banner featuring the words Black Lives Matter was put up on a billboard next to Fenway Park. The team's logo is also on the sign. 
This is not the first time the Red Sox have taken on the message of racial injustice. After George Floyd's death, the team displayed Black Lives Matter on Fenway's Parks scoreboard in June. There may be a nationwide shortage for lumber and bikes, but the state of Kentucky is seeing its own shortage of blood. In the past, Kentucky could lean on surrounding states if blood supplies were running low, but in these trying times, that's no longer an option. Kentucky Blood Center officials say that while they are seeing more people donate, the need for blood is still critical. You know, we don't ever want to be in this point where we're having to, you know, plead to the community. But with the rate of usage just for elective surgeries right now, we, we know that we can't keep up at this pace. The Blood Center is strongly encouraging donors to schedule an appointment ahead of time so they can adhere to social distancing guidelines. The world's longest yard sale will continue as planned this year. The 127-yard sale, which runs from Michigan to Alabama, will happen despite some concerns about COVID-19. Jim Stratman has more. All along Highway 127, vendors in Kentucky will be selling their wares this year just like any other year, even though it's not. Yeah, I mean, there's people that, that um, they, they find items to sell during the sale. They collect them all year long. And so um, this can be a very significant portion of their yearly income. The 127 yard sale will go on despite the global pandemic, according to event officials. Of course, people have to take some personal responsibility and they have to follow uh, the regulations in, in their local areas. Um, uh, some of the states right now have statewide mandates for masks, for example, um, and we try to keep that up today as best we can. Um, and some of some just counties have mask mandates and so forth, but we're encouraging everybody, of course, to have a mask. and. Um, to use it when, when necessary. Um, Josh Randall is the director of media relations for the 127 yard sale. He says doing the yard sale safely can have a huge boost for smaller communities. The whole premise of the event was to try to encourage uh, tourists and people from bigger cities to come out to a lot of rural areas. So this route um, for the 127 yard sale runs mostly through um, very rural areas, very uh, scenic country um, areas. And so it really helps um, a lot of uh, smaller towns and so forth um, to bring in uh, some additional revenue. The event begins on August 6th and runs through August 9th. Reporting in Lexington, Jim Stratman, WKYT. You can get the 127 yard sale map online at 127yardsale.com. Coming up on Mountain News at 530. If you have student loans, we have a calendar alert you'll want to set for next month. And we are still tracking more showers and storms that will move through tomorrow as the cold front inches closer into the mountains. I'll have a look at that forecast coming up.